Welcome to IT Free Training's next video in the series on building your own home network. In the previous videos, I looked at creating a virtual network and a virtual router to connect the virtual network to your local physical network. All possible using standard home DSL equipment and a computer running virtualization software. In this video, I will look at adding a route to the home DSL router in order to allow a computer connected to the local network to access the virtual network. To get started, I will now change to my desktop computer connected directly to the local network. To demonstrate the problem a bit better, I will open a command prompt and ping the IP address for NYDC1. You will notice that I get a message stating the destination network is unreachable. Notice also the IP address starts with 10. IP addresses starting with 10 are not in use on my local network. What has happened is the packets from the ping command have been routed out the internet connection and to my ISP. The ISP's internal network does not know how to route these, so it is not uncommon to get a response back with a 10 address like this. If the ISP has an internal outage, like a single router failure or routing issue, you may get a response back like this one. The reason is, 10 addresses like these are used by the internal ISP network to route traffic around. One of the internal ISP routers that has been given a 10 address has responded back, stating it does not know how to route this traffic. I will now open up Internet Explorer and open the management address of my home DSL router. Once I have entered in the username and password, I will be taken to the management interface. Unless you have the same device as me, your interface will most likely be different. On this device, if I select Advanced Setup, to add routes, I need to go down to Routing and then select the option Static Route. I will now add a static route. The destination address I will use is 192.168.0.0/16. This will effectively route all traffic for any address starting with 192.168 to the IP address I am about to enter. This router is configured with the local IP address 192.168.0.1. Any data for the network 192.168.0.0, since it is directly connected to the router, will be correctly routed. The additional route that I am adding will only be used by my internal virtual network that is connected by this router. That is, networks that start 192.168.1 and above. Next, I need to configure the interface that this route will send traffic out of. In this case, the local network adapter rather than the WAN interface, and then enter in the gateway IP address. The gateway IP is the IP address of the network interface of my virtual router connected to the local physical network. Lastly, I will enter in 1 for the metric. If there are multiple routes, the available route with the lowest metric will be used. Once I press apply, the route will be added. With the route added, traffic from my virtual network will now be routed correctly from my local computer. If I now close Internet Explorer, you will notice the ping command is now getting a response back from NYDC1. That is it for the configuration of the router. If you are confused about what has happened, I will now go through a graphical recap of what has happened in the video. If you understand what has happened in this video so far, you can end the video here, and I hope to see you in other videos from us. On this network, I have a number of virtual machines that are connected to a virtual router. This virtual router is connected to my DSL device, which is connected to the Internet. This setup will work fine in most cases. The problem occurs when a desktop is added to the local network. The desktop gateway will be configured to the DSL device, and thus when it attempts to contact a virtual server, the traffic will be routed to the Internet. When it reaches the Internet, since the destination data is an internal network, the routers on the Internet will not know what to do with the data, and effectively, the data will be dropped. In order to fix this problem, 
a route is added to the DSL router, telling the router to route any traffic from the local network to the virtual router rather than the Internet. Now when the data from the local network is sent to the virtual server, it will instead be routed correctly rather than routed to the Internet. If you do not plan to access any computers on the virtual networks from the local physical network, you will not need to add this route. However, if you do plan to, for example, you may plan to use remote control tools like Remote Desktop to access these servers, you will need to add this route. This has been another free video from IT Free Training, part of building your own home network and virtual machines video series. For more free videos on building your own home systems, as well as videos on other topics including certification, please have a look at our webpage or our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.